What's up my dear esteemed guests and my beautiful subscribers it is me of course Light here and today we're gonna be doing a brief tutorial on how to create your own ERC20 token on Ethereum and previously I did a guide on how to do it on Binance Smart Chain I'm gonna link that in the corner and probably in the future we're gonna be doing guides for Cardano and Solana and etc in case you have some suggestions which chains guide we should do leave a comment down below so in order to uh, deploy an ERC20 token on the Ethereum network, you will be needing a MetaMask and some Ethereum as well to pay for the gas fee, which obviously varies from day to day and obviously how much activity there's going on inside Ethereum, which we're going to be talking about a bit later. Now, there will be no knowledge needed in terms of coding really here because all the steps that we're going to be doing, I'm going to be explaining. And there's also a bunch of like already made smart contracts out there which you can just basically copy and paste now there are some like one click services out there there used to be a lot more of these but maybe they have gone out of business or something uh, but one of them that i was able to find after very scrutinous you know search in the interwebs is Bitbond, it does actually support a bunch of other chains. However, there is a fee attached to the deployment and this allows you to do kind of like some cool elements as well, like minting and burning. And it allows you to choose the token name, the symbol, the initial supply and the decimals and also support other chains. For Arbitrum, for example, there didn't seem to be any fee for Ethereum. Uh, it was costing like 100 bucks and for Polygon, it was like 20 bucks and Phantom Optimism and Avalanche and Binance Smart chain I haven't tried out yet with Bitbond but this is a one alternative that you could look into and I'm gonna be putting more if in case I'm gonna find some in the description down below so what we're gonna be doing here in the beginning is obviously going into open open Zeppelin which is basically uh, one of the more prominent entities who are creating smart contracts open Zeppelin's big difference to other smart contract is that you have sometimes an ability to change the parameters in the contract and that can obviously be a bit more dangerous because people can change the rules of the minting or burning or things like that. So there are expectations that can basically happen. But in terms of like wanting to fix something in your smart contract, open sampling can be a pretty good thing. Now they already have a lot of like these base things here uh, worked out already, which is very good. Um, there's ERC-721 and ERC-1155. These are NFT standards and obviously there are other uh, token standards out there besides ERC-20, but these are kind of the three most uh, popular one. And what we're going to be doing here is obviously choosing a name for, for, for the... Uh, uh, I'm going to be calling it Lightmium and we're going to be making it lit M. That will be our symbol and then they're going to be a pre-mint of let's say 2,500. Uh, tokens or let's say 25,000 and we want some features here like being it mintable and burnable and this will increase um, more uh, lines into the code obviously and understand that kind of the more the longer the code is or more complex the code is more transaction fees there will be to basically send it out or interact with certain parts of the contract. Let's say there's a staking element or something like that. So that's something you need to understand is the form of optimization. And what is really convenient here is that there's already like an open button here to open up it basically on Remix. And this is basically the very base environment to um, launch our tokens in okay so this is what most people use to basically launch our tokens there is one issue here with the code that is pasted on which is that you actually have to fix this uh, these two lines here because these are not exactly going directly into the github where the codes are so when we are running here compile um, there might be an actual error as I was suge suggested. So what we're going to be doing here, we're going to be pasting these here and now it's basically fixed out. And now we, when we compile, it should be giving out, as you can see, no problems whatsoever. Now the next part here, and so this is the tab that we are currently in, which is the Solidity compiler. There's different compiler versions and some of the compiler versions might be um, less popular than the others. So you're going to be browsing through the internet like from two years ago. You're going to be finding a lot of codes which are on 0.4 example. And certain, um, 
you know, older codes might have a lot more attack vectors on them and some of the newer ones also might have some exploits on them. So you might want to consult your friendly developer which compiler you basically want to use for this test purposes. We're just going to go with the uh, one, that ha one that the Open Zeppelin has chosen for us. So next up, we're going to be clicking this icon over here. And this is basically where we're going to be deploying the actual contract. And as I said, you need to have MetaMask on. And obviously, you will be needing balance under that MetaMask as well. We're going to be doing it on Goily, which is a testnet. And this is something you really want to do first. First, just deploy it on testnet before you basically deploy it on anywhere else for a multitude of different reasons because you want to like see everything works and you don't want to use like waste gas fees and th things like that. And also you want to just like vet out the contract. So sometimes uh, the developer might like sell you a contract. You should always ask, has this been already deployed elsewhere before? And they might link you that contract. Let's say there's a, a contract here. Uh, like I just pick out a random thing. What you can do is you can copy a contract here and Actually, you can also copy the code from these uh, contract source from here. So you can copy this over and if you want to just clone a certain token. But before you clone, it's very important to see whatever there's like exploits or bugs in the actual contract. So there's a very useful website called Solidity Scan. And this actually works for multiple different uh, chains out there. And this is something you want to use when you're investigating scams too. So we're going to be choosing Ethereum here and Ethereum mainnet. And we're going to be pasting out the contract here. And now we can have an actual scan of the contract. So this will allow us to give us some base data here. Is the source code verified? Is there a minting function, burn functions? Um, what is the contract? We talked about the compiler earlier, what version it is. Is it outdated? And there's talk about the vulnerable compiler versions. Um, and then there's things like, oh, how much of the balances have, which money accounts have more than 5%. So as you can see, this is a very centralized project. 31% by some random entity. Um, and these are the, like, just go these types of things when you, when developer gives you a contract and, um, you know, obviously you might have not to have a chance to deploy it before you pay for it. But what I'm saying is that ask them to deploy it and then you can scan it somewhere uh, before paying. Now let's go back into the screen that we were at. So here we are in the, once again, we are at this tab over here. And we're gonna change the Remix VM, stands for virtual machine, into the injected provider, MetaMask. And there are gas limits and values, and this is the way, which is the unit which is being used. And you don't need to change any of these. And this is the uh, contract that we're gonna be uh, deploying here. So that's the name, dot .sol, meaning solidity here. Um, and these are the other things that come from the Open Zeppelin. You don't need to touch them, just choose this one and click deploy and then everything goes right the contract will emerge here and you will be paying um whatever is the gas we currently on the testnet obviously has a very different fees than on the main net so we can for example not right now uh see whatever it would be costing so we just need to change our ethereum into main net and deploy and yeah confirm and this would be the cost. Okay, this can't be true. This is this is way too low. So something's bugged up. Maybe we need to refresh or whatever. But it should be around thirty dollars to thirty to forty dollars, given the current gas fees. What you can do always is go into the ether scan and see the current gray amount. So you can um, choose to just deploy the contract during a time when the gases are low. There are a bunch of websites which show you like the the hourly metrics when it's very low, when the Chinese people are sleeping, that's usually when the, uh, the gray might be at 20s or 50s. And during its very peaks, it can be 50, depending on if there's a lot of like NFT launches and different th things like that. So you can always um, speculate these things. Not speculate, but looking into the pricing. Now we're going to be checking back into Goyerly network because I think our transaction has gone through. Okay, there we go. So it actually went through and now we have basically minted out the tokens here. We can see the light beam, which has been now uh, deployed on the Gorily test network. And here we can see um, 
then my address now holds 25,000 of those tokens, one holder, one transfer basically. And I can choose the contract code here once again, copy it and we can run it on a solidity scan and see what type of rating it would get us. It may not be appearing here on very minute because it's just being deployed. So it might be giving us other error just as I imagined. But that's basically how easy it is to deploy a smart contract in Ethereum or a token. There are obviously a lot more nuances and settings, things like that. And that's why I always kind of recommend uh, learning how to code bit yourself or just finding a developer who is going to be helping you through the actual process. Now, as I said in the beginning of the video, in case you want to see tutorials for other blockchains, please leave a comment down below and we can get to it. In case you have any questions, I try to answer best to my ability with the limited knowledge that I do have about solid decoding, obviously. And um, yeah, I will be seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.